Hey, what is up, folks? Welcome back to another episode of Fish Meat for Dinner. Today, I'm going to be talking about how to make YouTube videos. So, without further ado, I have a presentation here ready for you guys. Let's jump right into it. So, first of all, you might be wondering, so, how do these famous YouTubers like Ninja, Casey Neistat, and all these other famous YouTubers, um like make their videos because like everybody wonders like holy crap I saw this cool animation or this cool montage how do they do that so let me breaking down a little bit the steps to get to that point so uh, here's some of the famous youtubers right here on the presentation um, so there's three main elements in making a YouTube video there's the uh, element of gathering footage the element of editing the footage that you got and the final element of actually having a YouTube channel and posting what you've created onto that YouTube channel and sharing it with everybody so that's the three main elements and that's what we'll be mainly talking about in this video <clears throat> so a little bit about myself and my experience with YouTube is that uh, for the last like four years I've been making fishing YouTube videos as you can see if you watch some of my old videos and whatnot um, and I also worked for a company where I edited their footage as well this last summer I'm not gonna give any names but uh, you could probably guess if you follow me on Instagram right here you'll probably be able to figure that out um, so I have over 1200 YouTube subscribers now I've been on YouTube for about two years um, I'm not a serious, serious YouTuber, but I try to get something out every week. So that's another thing um, to work on is posting at least weekly, and you should have decent results. Um, as well as I love to support on social media such as Instagram and Facebook as well of my fishing and uh, just kind of supporting companies or just fellow anglers. So um, that's a little bit of my experience with YouTube and just kind of social media and overall um, so the reason that you should be interested in starting a YouTube channel is because like creating content is it's a great way to get out your message um, it's an amazing platform people use it for all kinds of stuff and uh, sell me are there any like negative videos it's all pretty positive stuff people are trying to put this stuff out there to either send a message or to uh, I don't know make someone's day a little bit better or teach them something so um, it's just a great way to expand yourself and uh, help others out so that's uh, why you should be interested in making one so the step one is gathering footage um, <clears throat> so when you're gathering footage um, there's generally three methods that you can use so first of all is a screen recording software such as uh, NVIDIA Shadow Play OBS Studio which I'm using right now to make this video uh, and there's countless others so that is mainly used by gamers or people that are trying to do something like I am right now as well as like streamers and whatnot it just allows them to capture whatever screen they're trying to present on I guess you could say and uh, use that for later on steps and posting it so uh, the second would be that of using some sort of camera or capture device um, this could be like a GoPro uh, drone fitted with a camera or like I got right here a, a mirrorless camera or DSLR whatever you want to call it so um, one thing that's nice about the using a camera is that it's obviously going to be more high quality uh, I like to say the more that you invest in your equipment the more investment you're going to get back from your viewers because they ain't going to want to watch some uh, 720p old Hero 4 GoPro footage or whatever that looks like crap so sometimes getting some high quality stuff and making sure you have all your settings set up correctly is a big factor in uh, keeping the viewers attention so then you have the third and final way of getting footage uh, this is just 
uh, overall. It's not like saying there's not other ways, but this is like the main ones. Uh, the last one would be using footage that already exists. So <clears throat> basically, say you're on YouTube and you find like some cool meme or something that you thought was really funny, but you wanted to adjust it and then post it as your own. You have to give them credit because YouTube has really strict uh, copyright claims and you don't want those. So you just gotta be careful. You can use other stuff. You just gotta make sure to give them credibility. Uh, so yeah. <clears throat> Step two or the element two as I like to call it. Um, that's editing. So the first thing, like once you get your footage, obviously then you gotta edit it because you wanna organize it cut it you don't want to have stupid moments in your video if it was raw footage where you're like stumbling over your words and stuff and it just sounds like crap so you want to get rid of those parts make it more professional and flow better add more of a story to your uh, footage and your final product so <clears throat> the first thing you have to do is download some type of editing software I use DaVinci Resolve uh, 18 I think it is now or 17 one of the two and uh, it's free you can download it on whatever um, and it has great free features it doesn't have a watermark or nothing so you get what you get and uh, it's, it does the job pretty well so uh, then you got like uh, what do we got here Final Cut Pro X I've never used that but um, I know some people use like Filmora 9 I think it is and uh, a lot of people use Adobe Premiere Pro but Obviously, you have to invest in that, and I'm not ready to take that step yet. So, once you have that, obviously organizing all your footage, getting it set in a way that you think it presents your message the best, and uh, you can also add in other features such as music, sound effects, and uh, you can correct the colors in your images and overall make it look better. So, um, usually they call that step post-production and uh, <clears throat> uh, you got to be careful as well with the music and sound effects you also got to give the people credibility if you you don't get off of YouTube or whatever or they have other websites <clears throat> where you can uh, purchase a subscription or just buy the song outright and then you're able to use it because you have like a license so so then you have step three. Step three is to actually post or publish what you've worked hard on now. Editing and gathering the footage and making it look all cool, adding sound effects and stuff. You gotta have something to do with it, right? So what you can do now is you create a YouTube channel through a Gmail or whatever account. I couldn't tell you it's been a long time, but I'm pretty sure it's a Gmail account or a Google account, whatever they call it nowadays. And uh, you can customize it, make it look all cool. Put a cool banner on there with your Nitro Z21 bass boat, catching some bass, and make a cool logo for your uh, profile picture, and you're set to go, you know. So once you got that all set up, then you take your video that you worked hard on, you can upload it to your YouTube channel. You can uh, temp tinker around with the uh, title and the description make sure you always add a description because that's kinda the selling point of your video if you don't have a description it's gonna get ranked lower on YouTube's algorithm because they're like oh this dude doesn't really care or whatever so add that in make sure to tag some stuff in there as well to get more exposure as well as just look more professional one tip that I do is I add in at the bottom I add in everything that I use equipment wise to make the video and I provide what editing software and everything I use that way people watch my thing and they're like holy crap how does dude make this this is a pretty cool video then they know kinda what things I use to compose it so once you publish it you can make it uh, private unlisted or public public obviously it's public everybody can see it um, unlisted is basically people with the link can see it and then private is just for you so you don't want to release it yet so um, also tags are very important but that's something to talk about more it gets more into the algorithm point and that's not what this video is about um, 
<coughs> so one thing that you gotta be really clear with when you're making YouTube videos is your purpose you know if you don't have a purpose in your uh, to make the videos then like what's the point in making it like I got a quote on the screen if you can see it here um, it's a uh, student out of uh, UW Milwaukee pretty near me and uh, he talks about how he makes videos himself and he says if there was no reason for me to make it and if I didn't have a purpose to it then why why should I create it in the first place so just be clear with what you're trying to do and you should get more reward from it and overall just make a better product um, <clears throat> so what do you do now you got your video out on your channel it looks super cool and what do you do now so now you just kinda wait around you you uh, see how much feedback you're getting you get to see your views comments likes and one thing I like to do is I have a Facebook account I follow groups that are categorized to what I'm putting out so I'm a big fishing youtuber I go on Facebook I follow a bunch of fishing account or groups and then I'm then able to kind of project myself to those groups I'm able to say hey I just went fishing on the Wolf River in Wisconsin and I caught some walleyes. Here's a video on how I did it. And then I can put it in the uh, Wolf River walleye page and then boom, all the people that are like, oh, I wonder what's going on on the Wolf River if the walleyes are biting. Boom, they click on your video and what do you know? You got the right audience that wants to actually watch the video and you're more likely to get people that are going to subscribe like and comment on your video because they're more engaged and that's what they're there for so that's one tip I like to do is I like to kind of target the audience that the video is targeting as well as the audience that I want it to get out to because you don't want your uh, fishing video to go out to some people that like could give a care less about fishing because then you're not going to get good um, response so that's one thing I like to do so, throughout, this was for a speech that I did in class, by the way. That's why I'm so organized and I got uh, um, ADTs or whatever they call it, credibility statements and sources to back up my information. But uh, I'd say getting on YouTube and putting out videos is a great way to uh, kind of create a network for yourself as well as... Uh, try to spread any messages that you might be passionate about or just try to brighten other people's days so it's just a great way to uh, project yourself I guess you could say um, so here I have all my sources from my schoolwork because I'm a college kid but uh, I don't know <clears throat> there's not a whole lot much else to say um, if you guys would like to me to go in depth on say separate portions of it like I could break down what uh, how I gather footage for YouTube videos and what equipment I use I can do that and if you want me to break down uh, what editing software I use and how I tr go about kind of organizing the footage and kind of making a storyline I can also do that and then going on into how to get the most out of your tags and description and title and all of that I could also dive into that so very open to what you guys want to see um, I'm not scared to dive into anything so let me know what you guys want to see and I can do that for you in a, pre in a uh, future video so thank you guys very much for watching I hope you guys took something away from today and I hope I kind of uh, gave you a good reason to maybe make your own YouTube video and maybe use some of the uh, information that I gave you today to help you out. So, alrighty, thank you for watching. We'll see you on another episode of Fish Me for Dinner. See ya.